Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for the third edition of the FAIR Dialogue. At the FAIR Project, our aim has always been to try and help all of you filter out the relevant from the irrelevant. All our guests so far have tried to provide perspective to many global challenges that required us to step back, take a moment to think, and reevaluate how we look at these challenges. Our guest today has, over the years, well before I and most of us were born, been motivating and influencing people to take a step forward in the right direction towards achieving an equal and fairer world. Ms. Kamla Basin, Kamla Ji, has been working tirelessly towards equality in its truest sense, through a lens that does not focus on any one part of society, but to all. While she's known as a gender expert, some may assume that she is primarily raising women issues. As a man, I can tell you with utmost conviction by my side that her work is equally relevant for men and other genders as it is for women. And from conversations with her, the one that I had very recently, I am convinced that she, see, she too sees it in that light. I do have to take this moment to also reiterate something that all of you who have been interacting with us at the FAIR project already know. Gender equality is the only globally relevant goal that can lead to true equality across not just genders, but race, religion, caste, and regions. While race may not be an issue in every society, while religion may not be an issue in every society, while caste may not be an issue in every society, Gender inequality, or at the very least differentiation, exists everywhere on our planet. So if we can teach our children and our adults how to see gender equality, the same skill set will help them see all castes, races, religions as equal as well. This is the importance of the work that Kamla Ji is doing, and which is why, for me at least, her work is a mission for humanity and not just limited to gender. Before I request Kamla Ji to speak to all of us, and I know we are all waiting with abated breath, I also wanted to recognize the fact that the value of people like her is something that perhaps they themselves also do not realize because what they do comes to them as naturally as it does. Kamla Ji, what you have been doing for this world cannot be quantified. And may I dare to say, cannot even be comprehended by you yourself. Jo sochte hain auro ki, jinke man mein insaniyat ki chhap ho, afsos, mujhe yakin hai ki unhe khud ki ahmiyat na pata. Kamla, jitni tum gyani ho, jitni bhi tumhe dunia ki ho samajh, yakin mujhe ye hai ki, hume to chhodo, tumhari ahmiyat tumhe bhi na pata. Kamla ji, as you can tell, we are all ears, even though Mere Khan to Pagadi ke piche chupe hai, but extremely eager to hear what you have to say to all of us. Over to you, Kamla ji. Jai Bharat ka samvidhan, Jai Samantha, or long live the Indian constitution, and long live equality. I'm both glad and grateful to FAIR for this dialogue on a Sunday morning where all decent people should be having their breakfasts, brunches. Here we are. So let me begin straight away, friends, and say that we are all globally going through a terrible time because of COVID-19. People like many of you and me who are well off, we are well sitting in air conditioned rooms, doing webinars. But in India, you must have seen the millions on the roads, the millions who make our cities, the millions who make our roads, millions who keep us clean, millions who keep us fed, on the road, walking home 500, 600, 1000 kilometers with children. 
October. For me, COVID-19 has been like a magnifying glass, magnifying all inequalities. Like almost three months ago, we started hearing reports, first from France, Italy, that domestic violence has increased against women during COVID-19. Then we saw what has been happening to the Dalits, to the poor, to the working classes, to the blacks, all over the world. And though, friends, as I go along, you will see that my work has not been for gender equality alone. Gender equality doesn't stand alone, doesn't exist alone. In fact, it has probably been created to strengthen class, caste, race, religion. Without patriarchy, these systems cannot exist and they intersect, they are interlocked. And I know as a feminist, I cannot achieve gender equality without achieving equality in all these systems of inequality, exploitation, oppression. COVID-19 has already killed about half a million people. Two weeks ago, UNFPA gave us a report saying, gender and patriarchy have killed 140 million women. I repeat, 140 million. China has 72 million women less than they should be if there was equality. And after that, my country, Sare Jahan Se Achha Hindustan, has 46 million women and girls less, meaning They've either been killed or allowed to die. And then if you make a list of all the Dalits killed over the last 3,000 years, all the Blacks killed over the last 500 years, all the poor killed or allowed to die over the last two, 300 years. So the real epidemics are these inequalities. For COVID-19, I'm sure we will find a vaccine. But who is looking for a vaccine for these epidemics? The people who are looking for vaccines for COVID are perhaps the people who keep these viruses of inequalities going. The corporates, the big leaders, the big countries, who create organizations like the United Nations, but don't mean it. And I have worked for the UN for 27 years as an international civil servant. There is no lockdown for these epidemics of inequalities and nobody is looking for uh, because vaccinations for them. So let's go. Let's go to unpack gender. Unpack is not my word. This is the word given to me by my hosts. I'll, friends, gender is a relatively new concept. The word is old. And if you try and remember when you first heard this word, you know, we heard it in grammar, English grammar and Hindi grammar, feminine, masculine, neuter gender, stealing, pulling, napunsakling. Now, lately, somewhere in the 70s, 80s, this word was taken by feminist scholars, women's studies scholars, sociologists, and turned into a concept. 
Now, I started working for women's empowerment in 1972. I was doing the work, but I did not know this concept till about 1986. The tragedy, the tragedy with this concept is that most of us think we know it. That's why we don't Google it before coming for this webinar. What is gender? You think you know it. At least this is my experience in all the workshops I do. So I'll begin from the very beginning. Friends, all of us have two identities as humans. One is our biological identity, biological definition. And that is determined by one or actually one body part, which they see when we are born and say, oh, she's a girl. Oh, boy. Oh, my God. Intersex, neither a boy nor a girl. So this biological definition is given to us by nature. Not even our parents can decide. Although many Ghatia medical people are giving you goalies to have only boys and then they'll produce machines to produce children. So I am a female biologically because I have a vagina breasts and a uterus. My brothers are biological males. Poor fellows are born <laughs> with defective bodies, no uterus, <laughs> no breast. What? This definition is today called sex, our biological definition which is globally same. All over the world, females have these special body parts. More than 95% similarities in the bodies of my brothers and me. Until 14, 13 or 12, only one difference, visible, penis and vagina finished. So this is our biological de definition given to us by nature. And because it is given to us by nature, we cannot easily change it. Today, because of science, we can take hormones, etc. And people are doing it, but a very, very difficult procedure. And if we analyze why males and females are created by nature, we'll find that there's only one reason for this difference between us, reproduction. Who has been given more responsibility for that? Females, not just human females, all females. Now, why nature didn't trust males? Please don't ask me. I am not knowing. Other than reproduction, nature has not said men will do this and women will do this, and girls will do this, and boys will do this. And for reproduction, friends, men and women have to cooperate. So the difference has been made so that we can come together. It hasn't been made that one of them can beat up the other, dominate the other, colonize the other. So what is gender? Gender is not natural. This dupatta is gender. I was not born with it. I was told as a woman, I have to cover up my body. Dirty body. And the beautiful turban on Ramit's head is gender. He doesn't have the dupatta. I don't have the turban. And many of you women must be having extra holes in your body. I don't have an extra hole. I thought I had enough holes in my body. And when my father, who was a doctor, made it for me, 
I just closed it. I, I, I was not interested in more holes. I didn't want to hang the gold of my family or later my husband on my body and show off. So gender is the socio-cultural definition of a girl and a boy, a man and a woman. Something artificial, something imposed from outside, a feminist calls it, it is performative. It is performance, it is natak. And because it is not natural, it has to be taught from the moment we are born. And if we are rich and Western, then pink and blue will do it and all the toys will do it. So this socio-cultural definition of who's a girl, who's a boy, decides just about everything in our lives. What will the human beings with a penis wear? What kind of body language will they have? What kind of hair will they have? What kind of toys? What kind of voice? What kind of choice? When will they eat? Before the others? Will they be taken to the hospital fast? Because they are the future of the family. And the human beings born with a vagina are told how they will stand, where they will stand, what time they will come back home, what their rights will be. Will they get the family property? What their responsibilities will, will be? Will they do this endless chores from before the world gets up, they'll get up before the world goes to sleep, they'll sleep after that. And people will say, oh, sir, my wife doesn't work. She's only a housewife. The housewives of the world do work worth $11 trillion. And this is a figure from 1995 given by UNDP. $11 trillion annually. And they say, hey, my wife doesn't work. Gender decides our dreams. Will I, as a woman, girl, dream of becoming a surgeon or a nurse, a pilot or an air hostess, a corporate leader or his sexily dressed secretary? Gender makes differences between human beings, between people. Sorry, nature makes difference. Nature is the most diverse thing going. You will not find two leaves which are exactly the same on a tree. There are more than 7 billion people in the world. No two of them are exactly the same. Nature makes difference. Men, women, tall, short, fat, black, white, brown. But nature has never said that whites are superior, that men are superior, that an elephant is superior to a rat, that a rose is superior to any other flower. Kudrat bhed banati hai aur samaj use bhed bhav mein badal deta hai. Bhed bhav is discrimination inequality, hierarchy. Nature does not make hierarchies. All hierarchies in the world, caste, class, race, heterosexual, homosexual, old, young, able, disabled, that, that mindset is human, which is a good, good news. If we think it's wrong, and I think Theoretically, we already think it is wrong because the Universal Declaration of Human Rights says all human beings are born free and equal with dignity and rights. All human beings. So theoretically, the world has understood. It's only practically that the world is becoming more and more unequal. So 
gender is taught it is socio cultural that's why it is different some men wear a turban some men don't some men keep a beard some men don't some women wear a dupatta some don't some wear a burqa some do a gungat so it can differ uh what is the contribution of this concept of gender why did we create this concept the main contribution of the concept of gender is to separate that which is made by nature by allah by bhagwan for those who believe in them and that which is made by society i give you an example i was 5 or 6 i came home whistling and then i after 6 months i was whistling like this and my mother as if my god you got a shock hey you can't whistle you are a girl and you got mother yaar i can't whistle i am whistling how can you say i cannot whistle no 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 you can't whistle you are a girl you have to make holes you are a girl you can't play outside you are a girl and when you say why can't i do it she said because you are a girl meaning ye bhagwan ne manaya as if she doesn't have anything to do with this rule that i can't whistle i did not have that concept of gender to ask my mother mate why can't i whistle is it sex or is it gender if my brother whistles with a penis then i can't whistle and he does only one thing with his penis which i can't do impregnate another woman he doesn't drive a motorcycle with a penis so i can drive he doesn't think with that so i can think i can become the owner of the family property because that penis is nothing to do with it society does not want us to separate nature from culture sab bhagwan ne banaya ye jatiyan kisne banayi aur rab ne banayi ye brahman kahan se aaye brahman tumhe nahi pata kahan se aaye brahman brahma ji ke sir se aaye don't we see every day people coming out of the heads of men that's all we are born from here scientific body religious bloody science so the concept was gender was brought to separate that which is natural which we salute i have no problems with my capacity to reproduce i'm grateful to nature for making me a woman i have no problems with my breasts i have problems with that mindset which considers them hollywood bollywood material and sells them in the market so gender was brought the concept to separate the two and to say we salute nature we accept our uteruses and vaginas and breasts they have not created any problem problem is with gender that's why we feminists are fighting for gender equality and not for sex equality because sex has not created any inequality and that you know because we can reproduce all over the world before the male religion came like 4 5000 years ago before that all over the world it was the feminine principle the mother goddesses which were worshiped not only in india in the roman culture in the greek culture etc etc there's much much more to unpack in gender but no time to unpack more so we move on to the next question why did society create gender the same reasons why the whites created race 
why the Brahmins created caste, why the rich created class. Same reasons. They are to control resources and human beings, to exploit, to make them walk 1200 kilometers to go home. And now we are sending them aircrafts to Wapis Ajao, our factory are banned. Padi. To control, to exploit, to oppress, to colonize. That's the one word which explains everything to colonize. You colonize a human being, control his or her resources, decision making, will, labor power, and re productive power. One German feminist said about 40 years ago, sociologist, feminist, women are the last colony. All other political colonies have been liberated. But we are the last colony. Every man has a colony. Uski body ka istamal karega, uski sex ka istamal karega, uski uterus ka istamal karega. So, gender was created after patriarchy came into the world. So, problem is not gender. Gender is the product of this virus called patriarchy. What is patriarchy? Once again, an old word like gender, old word, new meaning. Patriarchy, old word. Patri means father. Archi means rule of. Pitrasatta. In Urdu, Pidar Shahi. This is an old concept from anthropology where fathers controlled large families. He is the patriarch of the large family. Today, it doesn't mean rule of the father because patriarchy is not only in families. Patriarchy is everywhere. On the road, in the parliament, in the corporate office, in Hollywood, Bollywood, where women are saying, me too. So patriarchy today actually means male domination. Purush Tantra. Mard Shahi, not Pidar Shahi. Mard Shahi, androcracy. A simple definition of patriarchy in three parts. It is a social system. So my mother was not a bad woman. That she said, don't whistle, come back home. She was only following a system. It's a social system. It's not my husband who, who calls himself Pati. Society calls him Pati, which means Malik. Society has given him this word husband, which means controller. Horrible rotten words against the constitution of India, these rotten words. Give them up. Husband, wrong. Partner, life partner, Jeevan Sati, Pati, Swami, Khamed, Majazi Khuda. Cremate them, bury them, outdated. So, patriarchy is a social system. Number two, in which by definition, boys and men are considered superior. Just as in race, by definition, whites are superior. In caste, the Brahmins are superior. By definition. We are saying it. No logic. And such system, illogical systems continuing, caste and gender continuing for 3,000 years, race continuing for 500 years since the colonization of the Africans. So third, in patriarchy, men have more control over three things. All resources, I won't name them no time. Decision making, ideology. The way we think, what is right, what is wrong, what is moral, what is immoral, what are the laws? Men decide. Religions decide this, 
men are in control. Constitutions decide this, men are in control. Families decide this, men are in control. Education decides it, men are in control. They tell us what is right, what is wrong. They tell me what menstruation feels like. They are the ones who write books, they are the ones who get Nobel Prizes. So this is it. Male domination and these three parts of a definition. Patriarchy is not just in India, it is global. One look at Mr. Trump and you will understand what is patriarchy. Patriarchy, like all systems, capitalism, socialism, has two parts. Structure, which is visible. Who is the head of the family? Whose name is written outside the house, Mr. So-and-so? Who owns the property? Who has bank accounts? Structure. Who sits at the head of the table? Who is the master bedroom? Structure. Visible. But human beings cannot be controlled only by structure. It's actually easier. If you control our minds, that is why you need advertisements in capitalism to sell everything. Without ads, nobody will buy it. So first, your brain has to be controlled. If I don't drink Coca-Cola, I will not enjoy life. Coca-Cola, enjoy. And big rich people tell me these lies. Billionaires, such as Tendulkar's, the biggest actors who are billionaires. What will they do with that money? And why are they telling these lies to our children and making them obese? And they're only into money. And they are given Bharat Ratnas. God. Ideology is what tells us patriarchy is good. Men are superior. So look at our ideology, our language, Pati Parmeshwar. Chairman, God is He, our language. If God is He in every religion, then He is God. <laughs> Simple. In India, how do you bless a newly wed woman? You dare not produce a daughter. You will be out, daughter in law. Then the word husband, Pati Parmeshwar, etc., etc. All the Bollywood songs. I don't have time otherwise. I sing them to you. But they are so rotten. Tu tandoori murgi hai. Main tandoori murgi hoon. Mujhe whiskey se gatka le. Londia patayenge Mr. Paul se. Every Indian woman has become a Londia. And all the men are these horrible people. Who will patao them. I mean... All the men I know are not that horrible. They are lovely people. I love them. But even they don't object to these songs. If anyone objects to these songs, it is us feminists. Ideology is made by all the religions. Ideology is created by education. Ideology is created by capitalism. No time to give you examples. So ideology controls our mind. And we, like zombies, get Kanya Danda. And the man, NBA from America, accepts that daughter as Dan. Shame on you, fellow. Give up that degree of yours before you accept a woman as a Dan. And yesterday she had her old father's surname, and today the new owner has come. As if a cow is going from one owner to another. And all of us with MBAs and this and that, ABCs, do it. And we will do the Karva Chauthan, we will do the Raksha Bandhan where I wish I had time. Never mind. So, patriarchy exists in every institution. Family is the girl of, of patriarchy. Family is the locus is the breeding ground of patriarchy. Can you imagine? 
a family which should be for me love in one of my songs i wrote jo pyar se bhara hai wahi to parivar hai jo phool sa khila hai wahi to parivar hai but our parivars are the ones who teach us patriarchy caste class religion they teach us to hate 99% of the world and accept only 1% the right caste the right religion the right sex and patriarchy is the school sorry family is the school of patriarchy and guess what women are made the teachers of patriarchy hum apne pair par khud kulhadi mare amazing huh? like the indians were taught to control other indians indians controlled other indians it was an indian soldier who was shooting in jallianwala bag order given by a white but the shooters were indian so like that we women are the shooters in patriarchy we make our children drink the poison education patriarchal religions patriarchal laws patriarchal because many laws are related to religion so if religion is patriarchal laws are economic institutions political institutions media institutions state institutions and these institutions i work with ramit works with ngos largely patriarchal even if women are heading them because it's not only men who believe in patriarchy women believe in practice teach promote patriarchy by the way we dress by the way we behave by the way we flirt by the way we do all kinds of things so patriarchy is not followed only by men is followed by men and women in fact many men have been against patriarchy and they propagated equality if i had time i would give you many stories from the lives of buddha jesus prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam guru nanak dev from the life of ambedkar from the life of uh, savitri bai phule and her partner no time move on so many men have prop so patriarchy has nothing to do with biology it has to do with ideology you can believe in equality as a man you can believe in patriarchy as a woman patriarchy can keep changing when i was born in 1946 in a small village in pakistan i came to rajasthan to grow up i went to government schools my country became independent and my country got a new constitution and like an idiot i believed when education will come there will be no patriarchy no caste we'll all be equal because gandhi said no sab barabar ho jayenge sab but today i see that those who are educated and well off are the most patriarchal i could give you hundreds of examples there is a brilliant book which i want the middle class women and men to read called chup chup by a woman called deepa narayan she used to be with the world bank she shows how women with the biggest degrees their modernity is skin deep thoda sa khurcho niche se patriarchy nikal ke aati hai to oi karwa chauth and oi bloody kanya da chup order it today it is on amazon so capitalism keeps changing today there is modern sorry patriarchy keeps changing there is modern patriarchy which i call capitalist patriarchy 
This is the most pernicious, most dangerous, most omnipresent. I am not a religious person, so I don't go to any religious places which are patriarchal. But capitalist patriarchy is on my television, on my mobile phone. Quick examples, capitalist patriarchy, pornography, billion dollar industry, cosmetics, which says what I should look like if I want to be a woman, billion dollar industry defining me moment after moment. Uh, toy industry, guns for boys, Barbies for girls. I can go on. Hollywood, Bollywood, billion dollar industries turning men into macho. Godfather, one, two, three. Dabang, one, two, three. And turning women into bimbos, into bodies to be chewed. I tandoori murgi hu. Mujhe whiskey se gut kaan. So my next point is, what is the opposite of patriarchy? I ask it everywhere and 90% of the time I get the answer. Of course, matriarchy is the opposite of patriarchy. And I say, of course not. What is the opposite of malaria? Pneumonia? No, good health. So how can matriarchy be the opposite of patriarchy? The opposite of patriarchy can only be equality. So we are fighting for equality. And again, just in three minutes, I want to tell you, both gender and patriarchy, artificially, they look as if they are very good for boys and men. Go deeper like I have in the last 50 years. Yeah, I'm celebrating 50 years of my work. Started in 1970, 2020, 50 years. Boys and men suffer differently. Maybe not as much as women, but my God, they suffer. Few examples. Boys are stereotyped, gender stereotyped exactly or perhaps more than girls. Today, girls can wear like everything they want. Boys don't. How many girls you see with jeans and how many boys do you see with saris, salwar, kameez, dupatta? A few transgender men who have given up their identity as male or female. So boys, you can't cry. A feminist has called this no crime, uh, emotional castration. When you take away the feelings from men, turn them into these horrible beings as if instead of a heart, they have a stone. Sangdil, sangmane patthar. Sangdil. Matlab kai mohabbat andar pohunchti nahi. Dil ki baat nahi gaya ni kisi se. Now, how can they say they are weak? So what do they do? Well, then they suffer from diabetes. They suffer from high blood pressure. They commit suicide. They can't say they are weak. They can't say I'm shit scared. They can't cry. Boys face more violence as children at home and in school. And if you don't know, boys face almost as much sexual violence and abuse as girls do. Boys are taught to be violent, to be oppressive, to be exploitative, to be Bhattamis. Hindi cinema makes films with titles called Bhattamis, where Bhattamis is being glorified. Dabang, where being Dabang, drinking in a police station, just pushing and pulling women, just killing men, ta 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 ta. Look at all the films Amitabh Bachchan made where an angry young man could take the law in his hands. Forget about Bollywood, I mean, I don't even talk about it. Yes, patriarchy gives men lots of privileges. Property unki hai, resources unki hai, khana unko pehle milta hai. 
सब कुछ उनका है दे आर ओनली फिफ्टी परसेंट नाइनटी फाइव परसेंट प्लस मैन इन इंडिया आर सुप्रीम कोर्ट जजेस हाई कोर्ट जजेस वाइस चांसलर्स इन इंडियन पार्लियामेंट एटी नाइन टू नाइनटी परसेंट मैन आर सिटिंग सिंस द फर्स्ट पार्लियामेंट the highest percentage of women we have had is 11% i can go on in the corporate world the globally the figures are 14% women have made it big deal look at the other figures men are only 50% 100% rapists some men all men are not rapists but all rapists some men 99% suicide bombers terrorists are men 90% plus people who do dangas on the roads are men jails are filled with men for all kinds of crimes they have committed all the people urinating on the roads of india where swachh bharat can't do a damn thing are men we women stop drinking water because we can't pee on the road men they be anywhere give them a tree they'll do it give them a wall they'll do it give them nothing they'll do it and while doing it they look here and there koi dekh to raha hai na ha ha look at my performance men you are pits i tell you i love you anyway idiots so final points on patriarchy and then i come to the last point which is feminism for which i have very little time four points no before that i have another point if i speak spiritually which i do i believe patriarchy has done more harm to men than to women you know as a woman i can be raped big deal big deal when i am raped at least i have not committed rape i have been raped but the man rapes he is the criminal 40% indian husbands beat their wives government of india figures beat or have beaten once or whatever they are dehumanized they have lost their humanity men who can rape a 6 month old girl have lost their humanity men who can come to a metro and get pleasure by pushing a woman's breast they need to go to the psychiatric ward somewhere they've lost it poor guys and none of them were born like that they were born human they were born beautiful they were born loving that's why there could be a guru nanak that's why there could be a buddha it is patriarchy which has made them rapists criminals horrible me too guys horrible guys who say all kinds of things to american women colored american women in the parliament in their senate so today friends the whole world believes and eight goals one foundation believes that gender equality is essential for development today the whole world believes unless women are free men cannot be free because men and women are together if dowry has to be given for kamla her brothers and her father will collect it if kamla has to be protected all the time the men in her family will have to be protected if my brother needs freedom to become a musician then i will have to take the responsibility of doing the family business and that for me is feminism that i make my brothers free that i tell my life partner hey bro don't worry yaar if something happens to you main hu na padhi likhi hu bacche sambhal lungi tu ja tune jo karna hai kar music karna hai music kar poetry likhni hai pure poetry likh yaar you are not a slave to 
livelihood. If your livelihood has become your deadlyhood, I'll do it. I'm your sister. I'm your partner. Gender equality, some people think, is a is a zero sum game. If I gain, my partner loses. No, gender equality is a win win game. For my brothers and for me. If I am free, they'll be free. If I am strong, on the coming Rakhi, we'll tie Rakhi to each other. And if he can give me a present, so can I. Provided he's not taken all the property first. And then he gives me a sari every year in return for that karodo ki property. Are ullu kisko banare ho yaar? Give us the property on, on every Bhai Dooj, Ben Dooj. We'll give you good gifts, promise you. So, all the people who are listening to me, at least on this Rakhi, think of time, a Rakhi to your sister. Give her that love and respect for all the protection she has given you. By giving you cups of tea, by giving you food, by cleaning your clothes, by telling lies to the father so that you're not beaten up. Finally, gender equality ki ladai aurat aur mard ke beech ki ladai hai hi nahi. It is a fight between two mindsets. One says patriarchy is better. The other says no. Equality is better. And on both sides, there are men and women. I have men in my life and you heard one of the men in the beginning and you'll see him again. Ramit. He's with me. Not ever since he's got to know me. He's with me. That's why he started these organizations, this fair business. Buddha is with me. I'm with him. Guru Nanak is with me. And millions of men who have started organizations in the world called Men Engage. Men Engage is a global network where men are looking at patriarchy and giving it up. In India, it is called Eksat, where men and boys are fighting patriarchy Eksat. Now, I am going to get Ramit over for a minute and uh, tell him that I have taken longer than I had thought. And I have one whole topic, this dirty word called feminism, which needs to be explained. So if you give me 10 more minutes, I can do it. Or if you want to. Say, no, thank you, madam. Please go home. I will go home. Uh, right now, ma'am, I think you'll have to take those 10 minutes because I'm going to find words very hard to come by. So while you take those 10 minutes, I'm going to be gathering my thoughts because right now it's it's there's just so much going on in my mind right now in all what that you said. So you'll be doing me a favor uh, of not making a fool of okay. myself by taking so those extra minutes. 10 minutes, please. Feminism is the only ideology in the world is the only action program in the world which was started only to fight patriarchy. No other ism was started to fight patriarchy. No other religion was started to fight patriarchy. Marxism was created to fight class. Anti-race to fight race, Dalitism to fight caste. Feminism was the only one to fight patriarchy, not men. Okay, what is feminism? The word does not come from feminine. Actually, feminine is the opposite of feminist. Feminine the feminist word has come from the French word called farm, F E double M E, farm, aurat. Hindi mein nari baad. So, yes, it is looking at the world through women's eyes. Feminism is against patriarchy, against sexism, against exploitation, oppression, subjugation, domination, colonization of girls and women. 
uh, about 35 years ago, about 2030 feminists of South Asia got together and said, how would we South Asian feminists define who is a feminist? We came up with this simple definition. Who's a feminist? Anyone who recognizes that women are discriminated against. Where? Within the family, at the place of work, and in society in general, meaning everywhere. <laughs> Anyone who believes women are discriminated against everywhere and who takes action against that discrimination is a feminist. According to this definition, men can be feminists and women can be anti-feminist. Who tell me, no, tu galat hai, tu bahu hai, you can't do this. So anyone who fights patriarchy is a feminist. And the definition doesn't say that you have to join Jagori or Sangat to be a feminist, no. You can be a mother at home and bring up your son like a human being, teach him how to cook, how to look after himself, how to look after the others, teach him to look after Nani and Dadi and the little sister and the brother. You are the best feminist. A father who is a farmer but teaches his daughter to be a farmer is a feminist. So you don't have to join Dangas and Dandas and organizations. Anyone who fights patriarchy. We don't say how you fight it, but you fight it. Okay. Men not only can be, they are feminists. And I have given you many examples of that. Secondly, friends, feminism fortunately is not one. Like there is no one Hinduism, no one. Islam, no one, socialism, Marxism, multiple feminisms depending on the context. So Dalit feminism, black feminism, ecological feminism, Gandhian feminism. So feminism should be like water. It should take the shape of the context in which it is. So for a woman in a village, feminism will be different. For my daughter, feminism will be different and it should be different. So there are many feminisms and within feminisms, there are all kinds of debates. Next, there is no one papa or mummy of feminism. Like you talk of Marxism, Karl Marx, papa, Gandhiism, Gandhiji Papa and many other isms. Here I have spoken to you now for almost an hour. Have I named any one feminist and said, according to her, no. Let a thousand flowers bloom and fortunately they have bloomed. Repeating feminism is against patriarchy, not against men. Now you can ask me then Kamala, if it is for equality, why do you call it feminist? Why don't you call it humanist? Huh? I don't call it humanist because humanism is an ideology which already exists, which did not talk of women. Why don't you call it equalist? Well, Dalits are fighting for equality. And many of them never talked of women. They only talked of caste. Blacks are fighting for equality. So there are many kinds of inequalities when I want to say what I am also fighting for and if I am fighting for women's equality with men, I have to give it a name. All movements have had a name and that name has been the name of the group which is subjugated. 
it was the indian freedom movement it was not the humanity freedom movement are indian ko zarurat thi angrez ko bahar nikalne ki to indian freedom movement student movement not student teacher movement और टीचर तो जॉन खराब हो गई स्टूडेंट दलित मूवमेंट इज नॉट कॉल्ड कास्ट मूवमेंट अरे जहां प्रॉब्लम है जहां जूता काट रहा है उसके नाम से हर मूवमेंट का नाम पड़ता है वो मैम इफ यू कॉल इट फेमिनिज्म ना मैम देन यू नो आई एम मैन आई हां तो भैया तू बाहर रहना तेरे को किसने कहा तू अंदर आ तेरी ईगो नहीं अभी अलाउ कर रही ना फेमिनिस्ट कहलाने को तो थोड़ी देर और बाहर रहे वी कैन डू विदाउट यू तेरे को बुला लेंगे ना जब तेरे बिना काम नहीं चलेगा और ये टाइम अब कब भी नहीं आएगा वी हैव फॉलोड एवरीथिंग विद योर नेम्स वी कॉल आर सेल्फ विद योर नेम्स मिस इज सो एंड सो एंड यू कैन जॉइन अ मूवमेंट अ ग्लोबल मूवमेंट विच स्टार्ट विद वर्ड फेमिनिज्म Shame be on you. Even on a Sunday, me galio dumi. Many feminists are intersectional feminists. They fight patriarchy. They fight caste. They fight class. They fight race. They fight heteronormativity. They fight everything. मतलब उनकी बिचारियों की ज़िंदगी हमारे जैसों की सत्य अनास है. And I am also my first work for. many years was not just on gender it was with dalits it was with adivasis of rajasthan in the un i worked for sustainable agriculture sustainable development and gender equality so gender along with all other systems is feminism western that is another thing many people think it is western maybe because of the word or maybe because they have an inferiority complex or they don't know their own history they don't know the stories from buddha's life where 500 women came to him 2550 years ago and said mr buddha yesterday we heard you have taken a dalit into the sangha take us but in hinduism women couldn't join the ashrams and these women asking the buddha who starting a new religion ke bhaiya humko bhi le le wo pagal hai kya he said no the women didn't go back they went to ananda had a dialogue ananda was convinced ananda went back to the buddha buddha called the meeting of senior monks 2550 years ago this country a man decided women will be allowed to enter religion because women wanted it those women were feminists ananda was a feminist buddha was a feminist and all those men later on when buddhism got institutionalized equality ka movie prophet muhammad 1400 years ago gave women the rights which no other religion had when it got institutionalized guru nanak when it got is the bloody institutions men take over sit there with their pagdis and pagdas and talwars and destroy jesus making friends with the sex worker honoring women look at the institutional church look at the catholic church hi 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 you know for these men like buddha like jesus like the prophet like guru nanak they were seekers they were enlightened people the buddha those who take over are thekedars dhanda karte hain wo dhanda hai and dhande mein aurat gayi दलित गया अदर रिलीजन गए जब धंधा बन गया धर्म नहीं बचा पीपल से ओके सो फेमिनिज्म इज नॉट वेस्टर्न 
every woman who is insulted, East or West knows she is being insulted and she doesn't read, need to read a book. Which book did Meera Bai read? Which Western book did Savitri Bai Phule read? Which book the Rabia of Basra or the Lal Dead of Kashmir? Nikal Gai. Which book did she read? Eastern ke Western. Are pagal ho kya? Ek nadi pa dam banao. Nadi knows ki dam ban gaya. She doesn't need an engineer to tell her. Ek aurat ko dabao. Feminist ban jai. Some of us say the first feminist was born the day patriarchy was started. ये बुल बुला दबाव तो बुल बुला उठता है हमारा भी उठा कभी जीते कभी हारे मगर जैसे जैसे आप लोगों ने इसको इंस्टीट्यूशनलाइज कर लिया धर्म आ गए दबाने एजुकेशन आ गई दबाने कैपिटलिज्म आ गया दबाने अब तो आपने दबा लिया कालों को दबा लिया दलितों को दबा लिया गरीब देशों को दबा लिया औरत को दबाया और राइट बट आई लेट मी टेल यू फेमिनिज्म इज अ वेरी डेंजरस इज्म दोज ऑफ यू आर नॉट एट फेमिनिस्ट आई वुड रियली सजेस्ट कि देखो पागल मत बनना फेमिनिस्ट बन के मेरे जैसे हो जाओगे सफेद बाल अच्छी औरत होती ना नॉन फेमिनिस्ट तो काले करके आती अमेरिका में होती ना तो सर्जरी करा के ये देखा मिट गया ना एकदम से ये ब्रेस्टों का अपलिफ्टमेंट करा के आती चाहे औरत का अपलिफ्टमेंट ना हो ब्रेस्ट का तो अपलिफ्टमेंट होना चाहिए फेयर एंड लवली इट्स डेंजरस इट आस्क क्वेश्चंस एंड द फर्स्ट पर्सन इट क्वेश्चंस इज मी हु वांट्स टू बी क्वेश्चन कैसे कपड़े पहनती है कैसी बातें करती है यू यू यूज योर फेमिनिटी बड़ा सूटकेस ले जाती है मर्दों को एक्सपेक्ट एक्सपेक्ट करती है तेरा सूटकेस उठाएंगे इट क्वेश्चन मी हाउ डू यू ट्रीट योर डॉटर हाउ डू यू ट्रीट योर मेड सर्वेंट फेमिनिज्म एक मिनट को नहीं छोड़ता अगर जेन्युन है Feminism is the only ism which enters in your family, which makes you question your brother. Is he going to take away all the property? It questions your father when he shouts at your mother, and even beats her. It questions your mother when she stops you because the father tells her to stop me, or the patriarchy tells her to stop you. Feminism enters my bedroom. It asks, does he wait for me, or does he rape me in a marital rape? No other ism, no other religion enters your bedroom. So feminism is dangerous. It questions every joke. Ninety percent jokes are at our cost. It questions our language. It questions our education. It questions our religions. It questions our governments. It questions just about everything because everything is patriarchal. Obviously, because we question everyone, everybody is out there to gun for feminism, to gun for feminists. All kinds of afwahe, all kinds of bakwas against us. So. friends feminism is a journey i started it unconsciously when i was 4 5 6 i heard the word feminism in 1974 1974 i was almost 20 24 before that i hadn't heard the word 
आई वेंट टू विलेज स्कूल तो फेमिनिज्म तो कहां से सुनना था नारीवाद भी नहीं सुना था मगर फेमिनिस्ट में थी जब मैंने ये कान छेदने नहीं दिया ना अपने फादर को इट्स अ जर्नी आई डोंट नो अ परफेक्ट फेमिनिस्ट आफ्टर फिफ्टी इयर्स आई फाइंड पेट्रिया की स्टिल हाइडिंग इन मी समवेयर ऑफ द अदर बिकॉज पेट्रिया की इज इन माई रिलीजन पेट्रिया की इज इन माई कल्चर पेट्रिया की इज इन एवरी कस्टम एंड ट्रेडिशन and sometimes i can't fight it the first time somebody died i didn't go and said maybe antim sanskar karu but when my mother died i did it when my mother in law a sikh lady i i'm a hindu i was married to a sikh she died i gave her a shoulder i went with her on my shoulder she went but kya kya ladenge yaar ab thak jate na थक जाते सब एंड फ्रेंड्स स्पेशली इफ योर फेमिनिज्म इज इंटरसेक्शनल इट टॉक्स ऑफ ऑल हायर आर कीज देन इट इज इट कैन बी अ स्पिरिचुअल जर्नी टूवर्ड्स यूनिवर्सल इक्वालिटी सो इट्स अ डिफिकल्ट जर्नी बिकॉज पेट्रियाकी हैज बीन बिकमिंग स्ट्रॉगर एंड स्ट्रॉगर लाइक कैपिटलिज्म हैज बीन ब्रिंग becoming stronger like inequalities of all kinds have been becoming stronger in reality but theoretically we have declared them all illegal the universal declaration of human rights the indian constitution so the journey i am on is a tough one i finish with a couplet it's a tough journey i don't i know i will not get to the end so what to manzil mujhe mile na mile iska gham nahi manzil mujhe mile na mile iska gham nahi manzil ki just jo mein mera karwa to hai okay kamla ji um Uh, um, I, I, I still, um, I'm probably going to struggle for words, but I have, I do need to do this, so I will. Um, for me, feminism, Kamla ji, is is my own personal struggle. It, I've always considered, I mean, at least in terms of gender, not being a man, not being a woman, but being a human, and that's what I've always fought for my entire life. but the stigma of being a man as very what you rightly said that if it doesn't i it, it just doesn't go away there's there's nothing that i can do which takes these stigmas away you know i mean i've been reading some of the chats where people have been talking about uh, other movements also being important about um, slave labor and things like that on this chat in itself and you know it's not a question of whether these things are important or not and as what you very rightly said at the core of all of it at the core of all of it is the patriarchy is this movement that is termed as feminism and as what you said it means different things to different people um i'll tell you and maybe i'm just a very personal story but when i was a child uh maybe about maybe i think i was 6 or 7 years old um i was at my cousin's house my i had a cousin sister and a cousin brother um, as in all good punjabi families we had a massive lunch and all the elders in the family went off to sleep when everyone was sleeping us kids my cousins who were elder to me about 6 7 years elder to me unhone kaha ki chalo yaar ek mazak karte hain sab mazak kya tha ki ramit ko kyunki main sabse chhota tha isko ladki bana dete hain और इसको फिर घर में लाते हैं देखते हैं कि कौन पहचान पाता है सरदार थे बाल लंबे थे तब इतना काला नहीं था थोड़ा और गोरा था जिस हिसाब से अगर मान लो उस समय में तो यही बातें होती थी तो चार बजे के करीब पूरे मतलब मेरी सिस्टर के जो पुराने कपड़े थे उससे मतलब झुमके उनके पहन के क्लिपोन था उनके पास वो उनकी फ्रॉक पहन के बिल्कुल उस करके चोटियां बना के लंबी मैं बाहर जाके घंटी बजाने लग गया घर की अब घंटी बजाई मैंने घर की तो जो मेरे अंकल थे जो उनके फादर थे वो आए मेरे मास्टर 
और वो पूछने लगे कि क्या बेटा क्या हुआ और मैं बात करने लग गया उनसे चार पांच मिनट के लिए कि मैं घूम गया हूँ और कुछ करके घूम गई हूँ और बातें करनी करने लग गया मैं उनसे और उनने अंदर बुलाया मुझे रुअफजा पिलाया अब मान लीजिए राम दस पंद्रह मिनट निकल गए उनको समझ ही नहीं आया कि मैं हूँ मेरी आवाज के बचपन में उस टाइम तब में तब तक तो आवाज भी नहीं निकल के बदलती जो बदलती है और मैं उस जब वो खत्म हुआ तब हंसने लग गए मेरे कजन आ गए सब मतलब बड़ा बुरा हंसने का माहौल हो गया पूरा मैं भी हंस रहा था मुझे बहुत खुशी हुई मैं मुझे ये खुशी हुई कि यार मतलब मैं लड़के से लड़की बन गया और इनको पता भी नहीं चला और अब जब मैं सोचता हूँ अब नहीं मतलब उसके बाद जब मैं सोचता हूँ कि वो रियलाइजेशन एक्चुअली क्या थी वो रियलाइजेशन मेरे लिए वो ये थी कि उन दस मिनट में जो मैं कोशिश बहुत कर रहा था कि लड़की बनने की मैं बन गया लड़की मैं ऐसा बन गया लड़की कि मैंने उनको विश्वास दिला दिया मेरे खुद के मास्टर जो मुझे इतनी बार देख चुके हैं कि मैं लड़की हूँ उस समय मेरे पास चॉइस थी कि यार हाँ ठीक है बड़ा मजा आया बड़ा अच्छा था बट यार मैं तो लड़का ही ठीक हूँ मैं लड़कियों के कपड़े में मुझे ज्यादा बेहतर लगते हैं और जो भी मैं आज चॉइस मेक कर पाया कितने बच्चों को वो चॉइस मिलती है और ये चॉइस भी कैसे मिली एक मजाक से मिली ये चॉइस मगर एनी वे आई आई थिंक रियालिटी मैम एज वोट इज द जेंडर इट इज सोसाइटी यू नो एज एज चिल्ड्रेन वे वी डोंट नो We do have no clue कि मतलब क्यों ऐसे होना है क्यों वैसे नहीं होना है क्योंकि मुझे तो बहुत मजा आया था उन दस पंद्रह मिनट आई वॉज सो प्राउड ऑफ माई सेल्फ बट इफ आई से टू एनी रियल्स एंड मे बी दीपल इवन इन दिस इवन यर इन दिस चैट हु मेक फन ऑफ मी यू मे से क्या यार राइट बट ठीक है है आगे बढ़े Anyway, sorry. No, no. no. Uh, I think that that's that. I think the other thing. Now I do need to ask you for questions, man, because a lot of people have sent in a lot of questions, and you can't leave us alone. So I'm sorry. You have to stay a little longer with us. Um, with the first question, now, which is mine, is that like the entire time I was just listening to you, and I was I, I was mesmerized, but not mesmerized enough to not understand the meaning of your words, and that is really the power that you hold, man. And Sanjana Saxena, who who's heard you speak before as well at her uh, college last year i believe um she's asking the same question that i am and i'm sure a lot of people on this on this chat are that uh, you 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 spoke at her college i think a year ago and right halfway through it she was sobbing and crying her heart out all right how is it that you can actually infuse so much power to such simple words everything that you have said is obvious ma'am everything that you've said is simple it's what how it should be but yet the way that you say it and i know it's not a question on feminism it's not a question on gender it's just a question on this ability that you have ye aap kaise manage kar lete ho um sabse pehle to main kehna chahti hu ki ye jo ramit hai na thoda slow learner hai yesterday he and i talked and i convinced him that he was going to call me kamla ya kamla ji the man has again slipped <laughs> man i have no problems but this is how now i will address him so sir uh, namit sir uh, mr chimney or whatever sir first of all i really want to that i'm really happy that you shared that experience at home with you becoming a girl that one hour play tells you that gender is a performance you did that performance for half an hour we bloody do it for our whole lives as women and this performance which you are doing now with your pagdi and your dadi is also a bloody performance this is not you this is not you and because you agreed to becoming a girl that afternoon is because there was something special in you the other boys would not have become they hated girls so much and in a way they were perhaps making fun of you my partner baljit went to doon school and in every performance every natak because of his long hair he was a girl and he had long eyelashes my both my children had long eyelashes and he used to be called till he was 13 or 14 
Susie with the long eyelashes. And with those compliments came also sexual abuses for Susie with the long eyelashes. Those boys didn't have access to girls. So whatever was feminine was available, was accessible. And boys from those schools, the boys from Christian schools know how teachers use them, how older boys use them. So very, really beautiful story. And my brother, older than me, he, you know, he, as a 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 year old boy, he wore my mother's sarees, dupattas, sarees were too long, dupattas, and danced on hawa mein urta jaye, mera lal dupatta mal mal ka. And he went on to become a kathak dancer. He made the most beautiful dolls. And when he was in his masters, there was used to be youth festivals in India. His dolls won national competitions. He then joined the army, then he joined, became IPS. And then he resigned from the IPS and joined Gurjari. And later on, he was the head of cottage industries. And until two, three years ago, if you found a 73, 74 year old man sitting on an airport, knitting, knitting, that would be my brother. Last year, he knitted a muffler for my little grandson. So there are beautiful men like that. And I am lucky to know them. And both to Sanjana and Ramesh. One word answer, three word answer. Don't embarrass me. Go to the next question. <laughs> no, I'll answer for you, ma'am. I think it's because, and something you said to me yesterday, uh, it's because you love. And you use that word, ma'am. Uh, and I think it's the value and power of that love that, that brings it out. Because it's that love that, that brings out all these emotions that you experience and you make us experience as well. If it wasn't for love for what you do, it was not love for who you are, love for the world. Uh, I'm answering for you. But um, I actually do believe what you said to me yesterday. And that, that word, the power that word holds is, is tremendous, in my opinion. Okay, uh, moving on. I think uh, more questions. Ramad, I just want to, uh, now I want to add one. Kamla ji, Kamla ji. Sorry, yes. Somebody asked me when I was in the UN International Civil Servant, Kamla, what motivates you? It, it was in Dhaka, Bangladesh. Friends, I have never worked in India alone. Since 1975, when I joined the UN, till now, which is 45 years, I have worked at the South Asian and Asian levels. That was my work. And even today, Sangat is a network in which we have women from many, many countries. So when that person asked me, I think in 83, what was the motivation of my work? And I, I said, love. In Sangat, we have a bag which says not love of power, power of love. I find all the mess in the world, all the inequalities in the world are because we love power. The husband loves his power, the Brahmin loves his power, the white man loves his power, the madam loves her power vis-a-vis -vis the serv maid servants. When that love of power becomes the power of love, and during COVID-19, we have already had one webinar called The Politics of Radical Love, in which Sonam Kalra sang love. Harsh Mandir, who runs an organization called Karwane Mohabbat, talked. And I, who runs Sangat, talked. Our next webinar on love will be on 7th of August 
where Parvati Baul, who will sing Baul Sufi songs in Bangla and talk, and I will talk. And on 16th or 17th of August, I'll be doing the same with Shabnam Virmani, who has become a seeker while singing Kabir. You know, these Kabirs and the Sufis have been reinvented when we started breaking masjids, when we started killing Sikhs in 1984. Then we went back to love, to Sufi poetry, to Kabir. And Shabnam went back to Kabir. She was a filmmaker. She was an activist like me. Started singing. I mean, sorry, started making a film on Kabir singers. And in 15 years, the woman has become a Kabir singer herself. She has the Kabir project. I Please Google her and invite her for a fair dialogue. I will be your interlocutor and I'll get you for her. Ask her if she would do it for you. So join us in these things and you will send me your email and your phone number and I'll keep you informed. Thank you, San, San, Sanjana and thank you, Ramit. Thank you, ma'am. Um, the next, I think uh, I have a question from Crystal uh, Magotra. And uh, it's a question that at least, uh, I, 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 again, similarly, I struggle with in terms of just the first part of the question, which is on privilege, right? When we talk of feminism, there are a lot of girls out there today uh, in urban India who are privileged, who take pride in the fact that they have, at least in their families, have had support, supportive parents, where they've not actively seen the kind of discrimination that maybe others have, right? And um, where they feel that they are privileged enough to have a voice of their own and not be treated differently from their brothers and so on and so forth. There are women and young girls like that. For them, how do they recreate and do they even need to recreate this definition of feminism to fit that relatively equal world that they've been brought up? And how do, uh, how do they look at this and what do they need to understand of feminism? Thank you, Crystal. Good morning. You know, I told you that my father, a doctor, made a hole in my ear. I told you that my brother was allowed to wear dupattas and dance. I was not economically, financially privileged. I was born in a lower middle class family, went to government schools. But gender wasn't imposed on me, like these girls Crystal is talking about. But did I not see that when I was playing outside with the boys, I was the only girl? Did I not see that in my school when I was in class 9 and 10, out of the 35 students, only three were girls? Did I not hear stories? of women by being beaten. So these privileged girls, have they become blind? Are they unable to see television? Are they unable to see that in India every 20 minutes a girl is raped? Are these privileged girls not aware that maybe the neighbor in Delhi has killed two daughters in the womb, that man who drives the Mercedes. In Delhi, the sex ratio is 880. 12% girls have been killed by rich Delhiites driving BMWs. So I cannot imagine any human beings privileged or not privileged. My feelings don't come from my experience. I am not a Dalit. I fight for them. I'm not a black person in America. I fight for them. I'm not a Muslim in India. I fight for them. 
And so I feel that if privileged women and men can't feel the can't feel the pain of others, then I feel the privilege is sitting on their hearts. Privilege has petrified their hearts. They need to do something to break those sang sang is patthar. Us patthar ko tolwane ka vakt a gaya hai. Agar unhe gender nahi dikhta, class nahi dikhti, caste nahi dikhti, and unfortunately, millions don't see it. And I pity them, and I feel sad for them. That if with those privileges they can't see it, then their schools and their religions, their everything, and that's why there are many upper so-called upper class. This is all upper is always so-called. They should be called exploiting caste, exploiting class, exploiting race, exploiting gender. Nothing to do with upper. They are the lower than the lowest. And let's forget about these words upper caste. As soon as I use the word upper, which I still do by mistake, I accept that ideology which calls them upper, exploiting castes. So I find many of these women say, "Oh, I am not a feminist." Yeah, you don't have to be a feminist. I have done all the work for you, so that you can walk out in them, so that you. Savitri Bai Pune did the work for you so that these colleges were here. You could go to Miranda College. You think your father started the Miranda College? Who were the women who started Miranda College? Who were the women who did all this? You think you got the vote on your own? Women in Europe fought for our vote. You think you get your positions in banking structure because your governments did it? No, not. Which we have today was given to us by our governments. It was all fought for by the women's movement, by the Dalit movement, by the workers' movement, by the black movement, by the Indian freedom movement. Privileged people don't give rights to others. We have to take those rights, and these privileged women and men. Should remember who got them their freedom as a country, who got them their freedom as women, and be grateful, and do something so that other people can speak of them and me like I speak of Savitri Bai Phule. Thank you, Crystal. Thank you, Ramu. Yeah, and Crystal, uh, you know, I think the one thing that I'd add to what Kamla Ji has said. Is you don't need to experience it to feel it, right? And as you do, and I know you, I've spoken with you. You feel this. Your question uh, comes from a place of those in privilege who may feel it but may have not experienced it, right? It's it's okay not to have experienced it. The fact that you feel it is enough. You are not losing out on anything in terms of what you can do, what you can achieve, what you can change by not having experienced it yourself because you do feel. Right, and that is the most important part. And to everyone else who asked this question, and as what uh, Kamla Ji said, they just need to be able to feel by knowing, not necessarily by experiencing. Because if they haven't, that's that's their privilege. But feeling is not a part of privilege. Feeling feeling comes from here, right? Um, tell these girls, tell these girls to wait a wait a bit, wait a bit. Their life is not over. They're only eighteen, nineteen. Every second office has a me to com complain. Tell them to wait. Tell them to get married. Tell them to get kanya dan. Abhi to dekha kya hai? Kahani baaki hai. So, you have me to baat kare, and that's that's really the next question that I want to speak to you about. And Amisha asked this question, and I'm, and again, uh, something that we see a lot of. Ki, jab jab bhi me to ki baatein aati hain, feminism ki baatein aati hain. It always turns on its head to effectively men becoming defensive, or women on behalf of men becoming defensive, saying that, "Oh, me too." No, not all men, right? That becomes the uh, response. Um, we talk about feminism. People say, as on this chat as well, that no, but why not X? Why not Y? Right? My question really is that how do you how do you tackle a defensive mentality like this, where someone the answer to your question is another question and not really an answer to what you're asking. 
Uh, I know there's a lot of things you've said, but any more thoughts would be very, very, very useful on this. We face it all, all, all the time. But Amisha, when we say Me Too, we're not saying three and a half billion men have done it to me. So it is absolutely right, not all men. I don't disagree with it. Definitely not all men. And you, during my whole talk, you saw what I think of men. It's not all men. And my God, there are millions of women who are rotten in India. The mothers of bridegrooms, monsters, the sisters of bridegrooms, these nanads, monstrosities. So really, as I have said, Patriarchy has nothing to do with your biology. <laughs> all men, are definitely not all men. So it's not wrong at all. And Ramit, if men become defensive, I mean, what's wrong if they become defensive? You come to my house and you see me shout at my maidservant. And you tell me, Kamla, my God, I say, kaise baat kar rahi So you think Kamla will say, haan, Ramit, I'm sorry, Ramit. Ha, it happened. I will be defensive. You know, we feminists can be very passionate about feminism. But we privileged feminists, are we as passionate about class? I have a 40-year-old severely disabled son, 40, so disabled that I need three people full time. All this natak of love and feminism and bhashan and webinar is at their cost one now taking out perhaps the shit from the backside of my son. He can't do anything. So all of us, we don't want to hear our mistakes. So I don't mind if men become defensive. And so it depends on me when I'm talking to men, how I say it to them. Some other man did it and I catch you. And you have to understand my anger. You know, my anger is 4,000 years old, Ramit. So accept our anger and we accept your defensiveness because you haven't done it, boy. But boy, that fellow is not like you. You know what I tell people that the worst thing about patriarchy is that it dehumanizes me as a woman. Patriarchy makes me doubt every man. You know, you stand next to me in a metro and I start moving away. How do I know that this turbaned fellow will not touch my breast? Enough turbaned men have done it to me. You know, in 9-11, the white Americans were told that the people who did 9-11 were turbaned people. And the first man to be killed in USA by white American was a Sikh. Was a Sikh. And the family of the Sikh then went and excused that guy. And then they went and met him. And this I have been told by a woman who has started something called the Love Project in America. A young Sikh woman. She's a a lawyer, she's an activist, look her up, it's called The Love Project. Amazing. So, patriarchy has made me suspect three and a half billion human beings who are males. Haven't this messed up my life? I don't want to suspect anybody. I want to love everybody. 
you know, but you, you know, I come from Delhi airport at two o'clock, three o'clock, coming from Dhaka, coming from Lahore, coming from Colombo. And every time I sit in a taxi, the thought comes to me, will the taxi man take me home? The other part of this thought is, will he rape me? How dare, how dare I think he could rape me. Before it hurts him, it hurts me and my humanity. And that's what patriarch is doing. So what we expect from men is that you speak up, is that you respect feminists, is that you become feminists, is that when you are drinking beer and your friend is telling you a dirty joke about women, you walk out, is that you call out every Bollywood and Hollywood film which insults. Don't sit there and wait for us women to object. That's what we expect from you. And that's what I'm so glad for these millions of men now in the world who have started these organizations called Men Engage, Men Against Violence Against Women. Do something, fellows. Do it not to save us women. Do it to save yourselves and save other men. Because it is you who are being dehumanized. I am not being dehumanized. Rape me. Big deal. Big deal. For me, rape. So, I, and I really, you know, because I'm in this struggle for 50 years, These things don't annoy me anymore. I don't go after men who, who are defensive. I look at my being defensive in so many issues. As a trainer, I make a mistake. People call me out and I, I'm often defensive. None of us, Ramit, like to be called out. It's a human trait. Men are human. And look at all the beautiful men whose names I've been given. Patriarchy didn't allow more women to become the Buddha. Patriarchy didn't allow. But thank God for that male Buddha. Usne meri zindagi bana di. Nanaki could not become a Nanak. But thank God the Nanak became a Nanak. He could have been a Lucha Gunda with Marsh like any one of you. Look at all the beautiful men who have given us spirituality, who have given us the Mandelas of the world and the Gandhis of the world and the Ramits of the world. जी नहीं नहीं तो बंद करने से पहले एक और सवाल पूछना जरूरी है मुझे आपसे उससे पहले अगेन मैं व्हाट आई लाइक टू से इज दैट व्हाट यू जस्ट सेड राइट नाउ आई थिंक दैट्स जस्ट द यू एपिटमाइज्ड द फेयर प्रोजेक्ट रियली इन व्हाट यू सेड बिकॉज़ इट्स नॉट अबाउट ये बड़ा वर्ड फेमस हुआ है कैंसल कल्चर राइट इट्स नॉट अबाउट दिस कैंसल कल्चर कैंसल कल्चर होता है कमला जी वेयर जस्ट बिकॉज़ योर आइडियोलॉजी इज डिफरेंट फ्रॉम समबडी एल्स you will Haan. completely even listen to that person sunna nahi hai sunna nahi hai sunna nahi hai kyunki are what you are saying is so blatantly wrong according to me because my ideology says that men are equal to women so if you even start saying that no but guess what i have reasons why women may not be equal to men right however i may get offended i will not even listen to you that is cancel culture right okay. which is what you said ki if someone says something you hear them out if there is reason so no it may be right you don't have to win every argument it's not necessary to win every argument um, no. No. and really that's that's what we keep talking about at the fair project as well that it is f a i r facts samjho figure out what the facts are figure out what the other argument is till the time you don't know what the argue, argue, other argument is how do you know that you're right you haven't even heard the other person. introspect within do you actually believe what you're saying 
and then give reasons give reasons why do you feel what you're saying is correct or true and then and feminism is really one thing uh, kamla ji and all that you've said is that if someone actually follows this process of fair and starts to give reasons there is nobody on this planet who will not be a feminist it's it's as simple as that in my opinion but the last question before we let you leave and uh, and everyone else also lunch time um is is on the fair project man on fairness fairness is something that we looked at what and everything that we've spoken about is fairness but if you really had to concise and speak about it in a few lines what is fairness really in your in your opinion what is being fair mean in fact you know i was timing my talk and in my earlier draft i had thought of suggesting to you that maybe to your eight goals you could add love and compassion and rahem and karuna same words so really i have heard your ted talk on fair project i really don't think there's much to add the fairness but these days i'm into really honestly a lot into love and love as a universal paradigm love as i am because you are love as the african ubuntu i am because you are and even love of god as this couplet ki ghar se masjid hai bahut dur chalo yu kar le kisi rote hue bacche ko hasaya jaye love of god this is love of god kisi rote hue bacche ko hasaya jaye rab mil gaya yaar mil gaya rab and again in fairness when you talk of fair also to think that man who is urinating on the road why is he doing it how did he learn to do it didn't his mother just put him anywhere i mean he he was not born like that he was taught it how do these boys pinch us in the buses where who taught him every every hollywood bollywood movie taught that boy you know i have a little grandson the people who look after my son chotu they have a son who's 5 years old and i'm growing up with him and i'm doing zoom classes with him these days and i went to village school so i don't know what education is for a little boy and little girl because i never went to those schools and you will not believe that he is living with me but so anti girls yesterday i was crying talking to him hey i am not a girl so i said okay then don't come to me because i am a dirty girl don't come to me for watching this video watching that video don't go to your mother for food she is a girl from where is that hate coming from ev from every thing he watches on television and he spends more time with those bloody tvs than with anybody else so fairness also doesn't mean it's not an intellectual thing for me fairness and when we sort of put it into these formulas it becomes too intellectual too mental for me and i am not mental i am heartal and my main work since i was since i joined the un has been capacity building training working with human beings we change human beings the world will change you change structures nothing will change you change laws nothing will change human beings and human beings have bodies so we have to understand the body we have to understand sexuality we have to understand the mind but only one not the entirety 
and we have to understand the heart unless the trinity is together and in my courses some of them are a one month long residential course like the one you do these residential courses we live together and the first thing we do in the morning at 6:30 is yoga or agriculture work we sit on the ground we don't you know i've been in the un 27 years and i did these courses through the un all sitting on the floor un courses sitting on the floor why would we sit on chairs and tables in a room clutter the room we sit on the floor on gaddas and we stop we break and i'm tired i lie down in the lap of my neighbor in the middle i start singing then we come into the center and we start dancing with those 40 tables and chairs where would we dance and that chair decides decides my my borders my my 24 inch border this is my land break the borders one of my slogans which has been turned into all kinds of things is i am not the wall that divides i am a crack in that wall in urdu main sarhad par bani deewar nahi main to us deewar par padi darar hu we have to be darars in the middle of two religions two nationalities two disciplines two ngos darar is through what you see or another slogan walls turned sideways are bridges so ramit fairness has to move wo kya hai ke रैशनैलिटी के स्कूल से निकल दिल की मस्जिद में आ जा तो रैशनैलिटी थोड़ी कम करो दिल थोड़े ज्यादा लाओ फॉर्मूले थोड़े कम करो ठक 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 फोर फॉर्मूलाज फोर मोर वो ये फ्लो फ्लो एक मेरा बहुत मशहूर गाना है चलते जाएंगे बढ़ते जाएंगे बढ़ना ही जीवन बहना ही जीवन लाइफ इज अ फ्लो एंड वील मेक मिस्टेक्स गिरना मेरे हाथों में नहीं था उठना मेरे हाथों में है एंड ब्रदर इफ आई हैड ऑल माय आंसर्स आई वुड हैव finished patriarchy i have no answers now all i want to say in the end is i'm very very happy to meet you i wish i had met you many years ago but who knows i might still live for a few more months years who knows <laughs> much longer much longer kamla ji and uh, definitely waiting for corona to get over so that uh, i can physically meet you and and i'm sure a lot of the people who are part of the fair project they would have really hoped that this session was in person but i uh, i don't think anyone would be disappointed at the end of this session really but uh, thank you so much thank you so much kamla ji for all your time for everything that you've said and at the end of the day uh, i i assure you uh, in spite of all the formulas and everything about fair the aim is to keep it simple and to make sure we reach a world where being fair is very very simple people it should not be complicated and i think that's some place where both of us are absolutely on the same page so thank you so much kamla ji for your time and thank you everyone for tuning in thank you thank you and you will do a recording bhejoge na bilkul 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 <laughs> chaliye all right, right ma'am bye